Okay, good. I've I've got the I've got the set. So um, we have an hour. Let's see if we can use it. Well, the you know the usual uh, definition of act is it's uh, you know a, a psychological intervention based on behavioral principles, evolutionary principles, relational frame theory that uses acceptance and mindfulness processes, commitment and behavior change processes to produce psychological flexibility. You know that uh, a definition basically says it's a process oriented approach, and a matter of using principles to to establish sets of uh, behavior change processes that you know change the trajectory of people's lives it, it's not a technology particularly it's not designed for certain syndromes particularly the whole idea of syndromes as a way of chunking human difficulties i think is very antiquated and uh, you know has shown over 30 or 40 years of its intense use how inert it is in this area in other areas sometimes of health it can be useful but in this area not and it's not the only one it didn't work in cancer either i mean it, just botanizing cancer didn't do anything until we got into the basic lab and figured out what the processes were uh, so uh, act as a process oriented therapy approach i think you could define it another way you could say you know any set of methods that targets that deliberately targets and has been shown to move psychological flexibility um, and can be rationalized in terms of known behavior change principles drawn from the various sources of evidence uh, for uh, principles of change from evolution science on down any of those things could be called act and i sometimes have said that you know you want to call it act call it act if you don't want to call it act if you want to call it something else well fine I, I have like zero interest in the brand name, zero. And, you know, there's people inside the ABC, ACBS community that call it acceptance-based behavior therapy or mindfulness-based emotional intelligence training. And, it, and on and on and on it goes. And that's fine. That's good. Mindfulness, acceptance, commitment, you know, the MAC. These these things pass away. There's The half-life of these things are very short. And the next generation won't give a damn. Nor should they. Because the thing that matters in putting processes into people's lives and creating a greater scientific understanding that has those qualities of precision, scope, and depth uh, in, in being able to accomplish your analytic goals, which we're pretty clear about. We want to predict and influence the behavior of whole organisms interacting in and with the context considered historically and situationally. Um, Essentially, that's the behavior, anal behavior analytic tradition, and this is just another face of it. Now, you ask about cognitive diffusion and fusion, which are one of those six flexibility processes. Um, you know, the uh, kind of working definition of fusion is the domination of um, events that have their functions because they participate in relational frames over other sources of behavioral regulation to the detriment of the individual. So essentially it's transformation of stimulus functions through relational networks that is um, uh, exerting too strong of an impact on behavior uh, given the context and purposes that, that the person's in, uh, both internally and externally. There's affordances there, there's things they could do and they're not doing them because the dictator within is uh, dominating them. Uh, that's a kind of a, a functional term. It's a middle level term, meaning it's not really a, a technical term. In behavioral thinking, um, you know, we're trying to get to technical uh, analyses, but we have to use middle level terms to orient. I mean, to give an example. Uh, you know, talking about aggression, let's say. Well, aggression is not a technical term, but inside it, you can talk about things like, mm, well, uh, you know, sudden decrements in the density of reinforcement will lead to aggression. You know, do it in snakes and birds and people. You can show it very easily if you all if you're buzzing along at a one level of relative density of good things, and suddenly it goes down. You know, you're looking for somebody to hit. And that's an evolutionarily established function. So the technical analysis of one little piece, it doesn't turn the word aggression into a technical term. In the same way, 
you know, RFT, behavioral principles, evolution, science principles, need to be able to get down and describe how it is that there's a, a decrement and a transformation of stimulus functions that are produced by these methods um, and to do it in a very detailed way. Well, so some of the things that we know about, let's take an example of word repetition. It's good because it's so old, you know, it's more than 100 years old. And because it was invented by, you know, a pretty famous guy, you know, Titchener came up with it. We we're the first to use it clinically. Uh, and it's because our theory oriented us towards the importance of dominate of, of reducing this domination in some clients sometimes that other times we want to increase it, you know, value is a matter of actually increasing the impact of verbal regulatory processes. And with children, often you're trying to teach self-control skills, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you want to increase it. But with a lot of the problems we're dealing with, you want to decrease it. And, um, okay, so something like word repetition. We kind of know that what the sweet spot is, you know, how fast it goes, once per second, 30 seconds. There's two different things. There's a believability and distress. They function slightly differently, separately. I mean, we know a lot. It's kind of cool. Uh, all the different ways that we can produce it. But what is the technical analysis of just that one, word repetition? Well, I, I think it has something to do with um, the transformation of stimulus functions for verbal stimuli depends upon their position in a relational uh, network. And when you're engaging in um, uh, extended periods of uh, relating, like we're doing right now, you're listening very carefully, I'm speaking hopefully reasonably carefully, and there's something happening between us, um, it's very hard for you to hear the next thing I'm about to do is anything other than a word. I mean, you know what a word means. And if I say a word, it isn't just a sound, right? But if I was started going word, 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 you know, by the time I finished, you know, I'd you know, sound like a strange animal and you'd kind of forgotten what a temporarily what a word meant because the, the transformation of stimulus functions, you think about it technically, are functions that are derived through the uh, relation of that event to other things. Word repetition attacks the relatedness because its relatedness is no longer sustained in sentences. It'll immediately reappear. You know, I can say what a word means now. Of course, we didn't do 30 seconds, so you didn't really go away anyway. But, uh, you know, I can say what a word means right now, and you'll, you'll, you'll be back to treating the word the word word oh, I shouldn't have picked that one that's so confusing but you'll be back to treating that in a way that's symbolic right that's where the derive the uh, mutual and combinatorial entailment processes are dominant in the transformation of stimulus functions that come through it well the same thing happens if I could say the word oh I'm going to stay with it since I'm with it but say the word word that's kind of an abstract term too it's not very good that one I I'll, I'll make I'll change it I'll change it to wood since we all kind of know what wood is and it's very close to word. If I were to say the word wood, uh, where just saying at one time took 45 seconds. Yeah, you could probably kind of integrate wood. You could probably integrate that into a word that has some meaning, but it would be about 15 seconds in. And you could probably show it neurobiologically, you know, the relatedness of it to other things has disappeared. Um, so, or these other one, the kind of things like the Carmen Luciano, you know, um, you know, uh, of, let's say throwing in odd things like uh, she did a study with um, children who are telling a story about being out in the, in the desert and she's, you know, measuring. I don't know if you know this piece. It's very nice. Um, she's measuring how much they're licking their lips, and and then there's water there, and the kids start drinking. You tell them the story about the desert. And suddenly they're like drinking water as if they're in a desert, and they're like, blah, blah. well, and then and her her uh, diffusion intervention is to say, and so you're out on this hot desert. Did you know that desert is the same word as dessert? And you know. Where you're just throwing in weird stuff, or you know, and you're you're feeling really hot. 
do you know that hot spelled backwards is tough? I mean, you start doing stuff like that and the kids stop drinking the water. They stop licking their lips. They're, they're no longer kind of in the same space, even though the full story is told, but it's chopped up with these weird kind of thing that, that uh, alters the, the network. Now, we, do, we really need good technical studies to pull that apart. I'm kind of waving my hand a little bit at it because it's hard work to do. And there's some out there uh, of uh, the RFTers, the uh, Carmen Lucianos of the world, or uh, Dermot Barnes Holmes, or Yvonne Barnes Holmes, et cetera, where they've really dialed in. Um, I've gotten some pushback from some of those same people. Yvonne, for example, saying that these middle level terms will never be dissembled. And I know I'm I'm frustrated with that because it's like saying we're never going to understand aggression. And of course, they could be dissembled. I mean, we have all these methods that have known impact. We've done the studies. Tag, figure it out. And now, now, true, when you fully figure it out, RFT-wise, you may realize there's lots of other things to do. But the early RFT work oriented us towards things like word repetition and pushed us to do things like silly voices or, uh, you know, using these gestalt exercises of looking at uh, relata like you would look at an object in the world, you know, how big is it, how fast does it go and all that. So we begged, borrowed and stole things that are out there technologically, but we've integrated it in a single theoretical account just with what we knew from simple ways of thinking about transformation of stimulus functions. So I think we can do a lot better than that, and we will as the research program proceeds if people have the right spirit, which is to, you know, not to get too hangringy about how we don't have the technical account yet, but also not to allow ourselves to get lazy about that. We can, you know, chew gum and walk at the same time, and we can do things that are tested clinically and applied at the same time holding ourselves on the hook for a really adequate technical account of that and, uh, you know, keeping our eye on how close are we coming to it and being open when we get there that maybe diffusion changes completely. Maybe we have an entirely different way of talking about changes and transformation of stimulus functions. Maybe we've got four or five categories in there that have really tight technical ways that you could do it. That'd be great. That's cool. Some of that's already happened in ACT, you know, with um, – Things like sense of self moving from frames of distinction to frames of containment as uh, the most important framing. Um, and both are important, but the most important. Well, uh, sometimes in the traditional cognitive model, sometimes diffusion in the hands of readers who read it from that set of the CBT traditional cognitive model, you start thinking of it as a way of uh, reducing. Um, uh, or altering the meaning of, of the word or, or of the thought. Um, very much like you might be trying to do a traditional cognitive reappraisal. And uh, so, for example, something that's very negative and extreme, you know, you would somehow use diffusion methods to maybe make it a little less negative and not so extreme. Um, you know, I, I think it, it does have that effect, but it isn't. That's not the process that drives it. Um, I think you know, diffusion is just this matter of the, the most common process is looking at the process of thinking and relating, not just looking at the world structured by the process of thinking and relating. So we're shifting the target. So if you say something like um, a thought record in CBT, we know that the earliest thought records, especially combined with behavioral experiments, have unusually strong impact on many people. And it's still a bit of a controversy in the field, but you know, you can see changes in session two or three in traditional CBT protocols before you get to uh, challenging or changing thoughts. But all you're teaching is this little distancing piece, uh, Beck's distancing, and then Maybe some behavioral variability, like let's just see if you can't do anything. Uh, what would what, that mean? Well, I can't make breakfast for the kids. Okay, so for the next week, uh, I want you to work on making breakfast for the kids, and then we're going to be recording these thoughts. Well, that's a diffusion exercise. That's a diffusion, in my opinion. 
Because you're not changing the thoughts. You're not saying think about it differently. You're saying, look at the thought, say or write it down. I mean, I've had clients, just the thought record, like, like holy beans, I'm thinking. And because they their thoughts disappeared in the, the world that was structured. You know, that it wasn't I'm having the thought this is bad, but no, this just sucks. This is bad. Bad coffee. Actually, it isn't. It's pretty good. But, um, you know, so... Um, uh, I, I, I don't know. Do, uh, uh, there's a little sp- a difference in spirit of diffusion of sort of backing up from the mind and sort of watching it or listening to it if you're not a visual person with a sense of uh, perspective and distance that's in traditional CBT, but it's there to get to uh, challenging and changing. And we just never get to that second part. That's why the early name for ACT was called comprehensive distancing. It sounded dissociative, and we quickly changed it. But um, well, not quickly because we were, we took years, but we weren't actually doing ACT outcome studies. We were doing the basic work, so uh, for that uh, period of time. But uh, so anyway, I don't know if that meets at all how you were thinking about diffusion and and how I think about it. If there's any difference, it may be in that territory. If it's if it doesn't it explain to me what you meant by that, and maybe uh, I'll understand better. What what did you think diffusion was? Oh yeah yeah, okay. Well the the uh, this little piece, this other part of the flexibility model, you know, this the I hear nowness of awareness, which is a side effect, I believe, of human language building on basic theory of mind skills that are there before language. I think I've actually that's the seed from which language comes and, and made that argument in the cooperation came first uh, article that I wrote not too long ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm with I'm actually with you, you know, kind of looking at, you know, the relationship between you and your thoughts. Um, but if you look at something like word re- repetition, uh, people actually do have that experience. You know, they begin to notice, for example, uh, what the what the word they're saying sounds like. They begin to notice how hard it is to say it. You know, that talking involves muscles. I mean, you begin to notice things when you're looking at not just the uh, functions that are available by transformation through relational networks. You know, re- you notice relating in flight, and you notice the non-arbitrary features of the environment and your behavior. Uh, you know the perceptual, um, muscular, etc. Features of doing what we do when we disappear into the network. Um, either privately in our speech, or like right now in talking. You know. Um, there's an evolutionary mismatch between this relatively recent 200,000 to 2 million year old process and these ancient processes that are, you know, learning's half a billion years old. I mean, half a billion years old. So, you, you know, operant classical conditioning. So, uh, you know, we're we're new at the game. Written language is only how many thousands of years ago? We're, we're you know, and then you start thinking about radio and TV and all of that. We've We've taken this one repertoire and put it on steroids and super steroids and super, super, super steroids. And then we're surprised that, you know, for example, young people are more distressed by a standard deviation now than they were 30 years ago. Well, they're living in a world full of horror, judgment and comparison. You know, you put horror, judgment and comparison into your great, great grandfather's head and he's going to suffer, too. But we're putting it into our three year old's head. Or my, or my 12-year-old up there you know, playing his video games and following his Facebook page. Um, so it's a it's an evolutionary mismatch that we're just so new at uh, that we're not very good at it yet. And it's going to, I think with science, you know, we've never put science to it, so I'm hopeful. You know, what we've done is the wisdom traditions, and those are a few thousand years old, and I'm, good, I'm glad they're there, and we can extract things from that. But do I want to just be putting monks in magnets for the rest of my life? I'd say, shit, no. I mean, give me the understanding that allows me to put the core of what that is under the factory floor, not with 10-day silent retreats that only the worried well and the rich can do or the young, 
but with uh, things that people can do in a matter of seconds or minutes um, in, in their homes and schools and churches and work sites and all of that. And that's going to require some serious uh, new knowledge about how the mind works, you know, of how what we're doing right now really works. 